Hey there guys, welcome to the video. My name is Vishpinder Gill and today uh, we are going to learn one of the methods for the detection of the problem of heteroscedasticity. Uh, well, I suppose you've already watched the videos on uh, heteroscedasticity or you're aware of the problem of the heteroscedasticity. So this video is specially on one of the tests which is called the Park test. Right. Now, uh, I suppose you already know what heteroscedasticity is and, uh, you know, uh, that how does it affect your uh, estimators, your, uh, you know, your linear regression estimators. Now, we are here uh, and we have to see, we have to actually uh, detect heteroscedasticity in the model here. Now, the Park tests. Uh, formalizes the graph method by suggesting that this uh, the variance of the error term is actually some function of the independent variable right uh, so it says that that the variance of the error term that is this value over here is actually kind of a function of the independent variable or the explanatory variable and it also suggests the functional form of that function. The test suggests that uh, this expression here is actually equal to a constant. You know, the difference between this and this is this i. i means this is variable and this is a constant. This constant into x raised to the power beta uh, into e raised to the power v into i. Where this, uh, as you already know, this is a constant right I'll just let you know about everything this is a constant and uh, x is your independent variable right it's your explanatory variable I'm sorry it's gonna be xi here xi is nothing but your explanatory variable and uh, v is your error term or you can even call it the disturbance term Now, uh, this is the model that it states. Another way that you can actually state this model is actually take a natural logarithm on both sides. You can say that, uh, I'm just going to write it in a different color so that it can be differentiated. You can say that the logarithm of uh, this here is equal to the logarithm this square plus, so you know, once you take the log on both sides, this, this and this can be differentiated with a positive sign be equal to the logarithm, uh, sorry, beta times logarithm xi plus uh, vi times logarithm of e. Now this is going to be equal to 1. So, you know, this will completely go away. And this would be the form, uh, another way of me uh, stating the Park test or the equation of the Park test. Now, how do we actually use the Park test? Now, uh, how do we find whether the given data uh, has the problem of heteroscedasticity uh, or not? So, here are the steps that what you're going to follow. So, step number one, uh, let's suppose you have a regression function that y is equal to yi is equal to beta 1 plus uh, beta 2 x2 plus some error term. Right now, first, what you're going to do is you're going to run the regression model on this error term on this uh, equation over here. So, once you run the ordinary least square regression, uh, now understand uh, usually you don't have the value for this, uh, this thing here, you know, you don't usually get this uh, in the real data terms. So, what you do is you can actually use the square of the residual or the square of the error term as a proxy or as a substitute to that equation so you can actually substitute this with the value of this right so what you do is you run the regression model and you find the sum or you find the value of ui square and then you substitute this ui square into this equation so basically now what you have to do is you have to run the regression model on instead of uh, instead of taking this I'm actually taking ui square is equal to the log of a constant plus beta into the log of xi plus some error term. Now what I can do is I can actually turn this 
into a, a regression, a simple linear equation. So I can actually say that the log of uh, ui square is equal to now log of a log of a constant is actually equal to a constant. So you can say you can actually denote this by alpha plus, you know, I'm just going to write down the same equation again. That is beta into log of xi plus some error term vi. Now what you have to do is you have to run the regression uh, on this, uh, uh, you know, on this on this model here and then test for so you know writing this as uh, step two let's say let's call this step two right so you know test once you run the regression on this then test for uh, the statistical significance of so test for the statistical significance of beta right so you kind of find the t statistic for this beta here right so if you don't know what is t, t, t statistics you know there's a whole lot of video section for that so you can actually watch those videos so you find the uh, the the t statistics for this beta and then in the next step now if this beta turns out to be statistically significant you know if it turns out to be significant in your test then uh, there is a problem of heteroscedasticity uh, that means uh, there is a problem of heteroscedasticity in your model, right? So that means you will have to eliminate that. And if this beta turns out to be insignificant, uh, then we may assume uh, we may go ahead and just follow the ordinary least square methods and we may accept the assumption of heteroscedasticity, right? So it's actually a two staged uh, procedure. So in the first stage, what we, what we did was we actually ran the uh, ordinary least square regression. Uh, you know, even though uh, keeping in the mind that there might be heteroscedasticity, the problem of heteroscedasticity in the data, uh, and in the next stage, next stage we ran regression on this, and then find out the value and find out whether beta is statistically significant or not. Now, Park test, it's uh, you know, it's not one of the widely used tests uh, for the detection, right? However, it's uh, one of the most basic tests which is there. Uh, there are few problems with this test so i'm just gonna you know write down the criticisms of this test or you can say what are the various problems uh, that uh, these tests give you now the first and the foremost problem uh, that uh, this test gives is that uh, the error term vi here can also have the problem of heteroscedasticity you know uh, it can also have the problem of heteroscedasticity it can be heteroscedastic in nature uh, which would not which is not considered in or which is not uh, you know thought of in this model here so you know that can actually pose problems in your value of beta here and the next thing next uh, problem uh, arising in the park test is that it actually assumes a specific functional form you know, it assumes a specific functional form uh, between the error terms and the independent variables. You can clearly see here, uh, this is a functional form that it already, it has already assumed this functional form. Uh, well, that might not be the same functional form. The error term and the independent vari variable can actually be related linearly or, you know, in, in uh, or in some other way, right? So it actually assumes uh, the uh, specific functional form, which kind of, uh, you know, you know, uh, kind of narrows down the scope of the test there. So uh, these were the problems and uh, the importance and the meaning of uh, the park test. So in the future videos, we're going to be talking about more tests uh, about uh, the the heteroscedasticity, right? About the detection of heteroscedasticity. So I suppose you're understanding this point over here, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to explore more about us on the website and uh, don't forget to give us your valuable like on Facebook and give your valuable feedback on this email address that is perfectscore79 at gmail.com. So this would be about the video guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.